there are two new concepts required to understand chemical equilibrium. The first one is the idea of what's known as either a closed or an isolated system. This is a system in which matter cannot enter or leave the system. It makes sense to us because if we had a system with just two gases in a beaker, the gases would obviously be allowed to escape. So a closed or isolated system is simply just when we put a lid on that system that then enables us to make sure that all the matter that starts in the system remains in that system. The second concept is one that essentially just reverses what we have learned thus far. And what we have learned thus far is when we write a chemical reaction, hydrogen plus iodine, what that means is all of the hydrogen is then used up along with the iodine to form hydrogen iodide. What is also possible in many reactions is that they can be reversed. What that basically means is that two hydrogen iodide molecules can react with each other to break apart and form our original reactants once again. Reactions like this we say are reversible because we are saying that the forward reaction in which reactants are converted into products is able to be reversed where those products are converted into reactants once again. Obviously, if the forward reaction in this case is exothermic, meaning that it heats up the system, that must mean that the reverse reaction is endothermic, meaning the system would cool down. Now, what this leads to is essentially an endless process in which reactants are converted into products, and those products are then converted into reactants once again, and you get the cyclical process known as chemical equilibrium. In order to illustrate this idea, I'm going to start out with a system in which we imagine that we have 10 hydrogen molecules and 10 iodine molecules, and obviously at the start, since we have only added these, there's no hydrogen iodide. We know that these react with each other in a ratio of one to one, so let's say that five hydrogen molecules react at the same time five iodine molecules react. We know that it produces twice as many hydrogen iodide molecules, which means that we produce 10 hydrogen iodide molecules. Now at this point, there are enough hydrogen iodide molecules for the reverse reaction to start, which means that now we have hydrogen iodide that is being used up to produce hydrogen and iodine. And at the point where the same amount of hydrogen and iodine are being converted into hydrogen iodide, we say the rate of the forward reaction, at the point where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate at which the reverse reaction is pro converting products back into reactants, we say that we have established a chemical equilibrium. We say this because at that point, it looks like the amount of each substance present remains constant. Because every time one hydrogen is used up on this side, another one is produced as a result of this, so the net change to the amount of hydrogen or the amount of hydrogen iodide remains zero. So, very simply, once again, we know that a reversible reaction is one in which products can be converted back into reactants, and we say that chemical equilibrium has been established at the point where the rate at which reactants are converted into products is equal to the rate at which the products are converted back into reactants, and that is seen by a constant concentration of all agents present in that reaction.